Hello everybody, welcome back to Jeff's Computer Service on YouTube. Today I'm going to be showing you guys on how to install and set up your true NAS core on your Promux server. So let's go ahead and get started. For this demonstration, I am going to be setting up SMB shares for Windows. So let's go ahead and get started and install a true NAS core on your Promux. So first up, I already have it here. So let's just create the VM. Just open up your products, create the VM, give it a name. Then it's just gonna keep it simple. True DAS. Click next or OS. Select the ISO image. You can download it from their website. I'm going to have the download link in the description for whatever reason if you cannot find it. Here it is, true NAS. Everything else you can leave it default. You don't have to change anything else in your Promux server. Just next. System, same. Just keep it default. You don't have to change anything. Now in here, we're going to be making two virtual drives. One is going to be the boot drive, and the other one is going to be the drive for the SMB. So for NAS, uh, on the website, if I'm not mistaken, uh, recommended for the boot drive, it could be 8, 16, or 32 gigs. So for this demonstration, I must just use 25 for the boot drive. And, and I had another one, since I have about uh, 1.5 uh, tera. So I must just use here 600. Uh, let's do 610 gigs, because I'm actually going to use this for myself. So from there, there we go. The boot drive is going to be 25 and the ESMP drive, 610 gigs. So let's click on max. CPU, let's give it uh, four cores. Max. And for memory, I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it 10 gigs. This is recommended uh, 16, but I'm, I don't have that much. I do have that much, but I don't, want, I don't want to max it out. So I must just use 10. Yeah, 10, 10 gigs. That should be enough. Now I'll just click on max. Nightware. You can just leave this default as well. And finish. Okay. Now let's give it a second while it loads up. There it is. True this. Now before I start anything, I'm going to go to options to change the con the boot order and since this is on my Promox server this is a separate computer that I already have set up I want this to start up automatically if for whatever reason the light goes out it happens here in my area to start out a boot and for the boot order on how it when the machine boots, loads up I want the media to start up first so I have no issues and the second would be the boot drive, 25 gigs. And the third, the SMB drive. Just turn that one. This is my preference, but this is how, how I would do it. That's done. Everything else is set up. You can see it here. Now go to the console, and we're just going to start it up. Now, the console should already. Uh, start up there it is true nas so we should get the installer in a few seconds out of boot now let's just wait that to load true nas has changed over time once you see the web ui it's actually a little bit more user friendly than it was before so that's actually very good for people that are not that tech savvy or prefer something more user friendly than more like advanced so we're here now let's just click on install slash upgrade, enter. Now here, select the boot drive, 25 gigs, use space, and click OK. Oh, I'm sorry, click enter. Now, yes, there's nothing there. And now a password. This password is going to be the root password, so you can enter on the web UI for those that do not know. So 
Don't forget this password. If not, you're going to have to do this process all over again. Click OK. And put payout files. We'll click just leave that default. Now, this is going to take a few minutes. So I'm going to just go ahead and fast forward this. Okay, and there we go. The TrueNAS installation has succeeded. Now we're just going to click OK. <coughs> okay, now from here, I'm going to reboot the system, but in this case, it might pop us, it might bring us back up to this menu, to the installer menu. So in this case, we're going to actually shut down the virtual machine. So let's just shut it down. Let's just get that a few seconds. Once that's finished, from here on, we're going to go to hardware and we're going to remove the CD, in this case, the ISO. Remove that. Click yes. Okay, there we go. Now from here on, we can just start it up again and we should immediately boot up with the TrueNAS console already installed on the boot drive. Okay, there it is. It is the, the, the both this zero and one. And there's the TrueNAS. Now from here, we just need to wait for this to finish. And from this part, we should already see the the website guide for the IP address that's going to appear. The IP address is going to be selected dynamically. We should see it here in a few seconds. Now let's just wait for this to finish loading up. This might take a, a long time. You, you can even see it as it says there. So let's just uh, wait. I'm gonna fast forward this. Okay, and there we go. The TrueNAS has officially already finished loading up. And we can see that the web user interface is at the IP address 192.168.86.202. So let's go ahead and load that up. Let's click on, let's open a new tab. 192.168.86.202. Now let's just click enter. You're going to continue. And there's the web UI. Now, as I said before, the username for this, it's root. And the password is the password that you set up in the installer. Click enter. And there we go. We're logged in. Perfect. Now, we're in here, we're going to do a few things. We're going to make a new user. We're going to change the network to static. We're going to make a pool. And we're going to make the window SMB drive. So let's go ahead and get started with that. First, we're going to make the network and change the static. Go to network. Interface. Interface. From here. Here it is, it's dynamic. I want to turn that off. Click there, it did. Uncheck that. Now in here, just put the IP address, which I'm just gonna keep it the same IP. 192.168.86.202. I'm gonna apply that. Test the changes. Yes, please. Yes. And save it. It's been changed permanently. Perfect. Now that's done. We're going to go to storage and we're going to make a pool. From the pool here, you click on add. Create a new pool or you can import one. In our case, we're going to create a pool. From here, give it a name. Let's use this one that I already have saved up here, SME drive. And since it's a virtual drive, 
it's not gonna have uh not a serial number i do not know what this appears so i am i'm sure in this part but you can just click here to show this select that just drag it to the other side just follow the arrows and yes it's going to give you this warning that you might have data loss if it fails but in our cases this is just a demonstration so you can ignore this if you want i actually have no issues with this i might use this later for something else for a future project so you can ignore that in my case i'm okay i'm using a raid mode for my promax so i actually have no issues with this so just click on force that's fine confirm continue and click create oh yes we know that everything's going to be deleted even though there's nothing there on the drive create pool and there it is there's the pool now that that is done from here now we're gonna make the smb service so go to sharing now click window share now add a new one select the pad in that case we're gonna use the name that we did smb drive now here actually for my preference no presets Everything else can be on default. If you want to add description, it's really more of your preference. Now here, just click submit and enable service. Enable the server automatically. If you click cancel, that's fine. For whatever reason, this doesn't pop up. This is to start the SMB service. This has been enabled. That's good. Close this out. If that doesn't pop up or you click answer uh, cancel by mistake, you just go here to services. And it's right here. Scroll down, and there it is. This is important to have this start automatically for whatever reason it doesn't. It might be because of this is not checked. And here you can also find different services if you want to do SSH. It's right here too. Very convenient. Now that now that is done, all we need to do now is go and create a user. From here, go to accounts. Click on user. Close. Now add. I'm just gonna use my name, username. Let's keep it the same. I'm not gonna add an email. Uh, let's just put in the password. And do it again to confirm it. Everything else you can leave it default unless if you want to change it to your preference. Now here. I'm gonna change this group and put it on the built-in administrator. Now here, select the directory information you want this user to be in. So we want him to have access to this one. And for right and everything else, add that. As I was saying before about the SSH, you even have it here if you want to download a public key or to set it up. Since I want this user to have administrator, I actually want sudo for this as well for another feature. So just click submit. And okay, that's it, we're done. So now all the process has been done in TrueNAS. Now we want to access this drive. So just open your file explorer. And now to exit it, exit, all we need to do is go to the IP address of the true NAS slash slash 192.168.86.202. Obviously, this might be different for you if you have a different IP pool, but that's fine. In my case, this is the IP. Just click on enter and you should get a credentials login pop up. Enter. And there we go. For in my case, I did not get it before because I already did this. 
everything, but that's fine. Once you see the credentials, it should all you need to put is the name of the user, in my case mine, and the password, and that's it. Now from here, you're able to log into this drive, log into your name, and from here we can actually, if you try to do it here, if I'm not mistaken, it's not gonna let you. So you need to do it from here. Let's say if you create a new folder, anything from here, you do have permissions. You can create a folder, just name it SMB. But you know what? Let's boot movies for this example. And there we go. So we can actually add stuff from there, from the desktop. Let's just add a few additional stuff from here. Let's add this icons just for an example, something random. And there it is. Now, we're, we're now the, what, we're, what we're going to do now is that we're going to mount it. We're going to mount this drive. Now from here, just copy the link. I'm sorry, the pad. Copy the pad. Open a new tab. Okay, so now you're just gonna click on the three dots and click on map never dry and it's just paste what you copy and now it says click finish and there it is for whatever reason uh, you don't see uh, the file size just rename it put smb1 and you should see already how much it is and that's it guys you have successfully set up TrueNAS Core on your Promax server and set up SMB Windows Share on your TrueNAS. Well, guys, I have hope you found this educational and helpful for any uh, future reference that you might use this for. And I hope it was very easy to understand. If anybody has any issues about this, please do not hesitate and leave a comment below. I will try to respond to you as soon as possible and if you want any more related videos about this please share your suggestions share your ideas i am willing to read them out and try to make a video about that as always guys thank you for watching subscribe like it supports the channel a lot as always guys have a good one goodbye